Welcome, everybody, to another episode here on the SITREP Podcast. We are going to be changing gears a little bit today, uh, away from, you know, our usual World War II and moderns and, you know, other 20th century kind of wargaming review fair. And given that today is June 18th, we're going to be taking a look at... Um, Good evening, sir. Oh, hello, Laughing Boy. Good. Uh, welcome very much to our, to our stream, sir. I'm sorry. Uh, I kind of lost my, my train of thought there. Um, we're going to be taking a look at the Battle of Waterloo in uh, a mod that uh, people have put together for the old People General System. People's General System, I should say. Uh, from uh, SSI back in 1998. So we're going to take a look at this. Uh, we're going to take a look at Waterloo uh, as this game sort of you know interprets it. And uh, I built this scenario myself. Uh, I am conversant in Napoleonics. I uh, kind of know what I'm doing where I don't make a complete jackass out of myself. But I am not an expert. This is a risky away from the American Revolution, away from the Eastern Front, away from Prokhorovka and Kursk and Normandy and Battle of the Bulge and all that stuff. This is me on sort of thin ice. So any Napoleonic fans out there, I am, I am, you know, doing my best. Um, this game comes with, uh, obviously, its rules engine and its maps and all of its unit types and things like that. However, you do have to build the scenarios yourself. So I did have to do a little bit of a crash course on the actual army composition and makeup of um, Waterloo and actually build the scenario uh, myself today. But before we get uh, started too much, again, welcome. Um, we have uh, some new people here in our stream. Uh, welcome, Laughing Boy. Thanks very much for joining us, uh, Because Science Teacher. Also, Because Science Teacher has uh, resubscribed. Thanks very much. We totally appreciate it. All the support that we can get um, here on Sit Red Podcast, we always appreciate it. So, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So, first thing we're going to look at is we're going to uh, look at playing a scenario. I keep mentioning, by the way, that this is a mod of a People's General Rules Engine because you're going to see some weird things in the interface here, like air support and air superiority and anti-tank values and you know stuff like that. Obviously, it has no business in a Napoleonic's game. Just again, it's a mod of an existing game engine, so they have to kind of work with what they've got. Um, here's the scenario I built myself earlier today. Uh, we're going to be playing the British, and we're going to try and defeat uh, old Boney, as they, I, guess they used to, I think they used to call him. And uh, we're going to see what we can do on that one. But for now, uh, just so I can show everybody, um, you know, all the units or whatever, we're going to sort of fall start the game here with human player on both sides. And here's our map. Uh, because Laughing Boy, it must be pretty late uh, where you're at. I do apologize for the late hour for my friends in the UK, but it is, again, um, I do have to go to work, um, you know, we are still working, so it's kind of tough. Um, okay, so here we have uh, the French army, uh, the, I made the French the attackers, because, you know, that's kind of how it was um, historically. Before we get too deep into it, here's a strategic map, so this is the general layout of the Battle of Waterloo. Um, north is the top of the map, obviously. And uh, we have the French army uh, laid out here. The British army, again, right now we're playing with Fog of War rules, so we can't see it. I'll show you the British army in just a little while. But the British army is pretty much in a matching curve, kind of like this, if you can follow that arrow. Um, trust me, it's there. But for now, uh, we're looking at the French army. Uh, we have some, uh, some uh, landmarks, of course. Uh, we have the high ground over here on the French left. That's, uh, that's famously there. Uh, we have the woods over here to the right, and then we have Hougamont, the famous uh, French uh, farm chateau that's uh, braced up over there. In the center, we have um, La Haye Saint. Again, I'm gonna I'm gonna excuse myself and apologize now for my French pronunciation. I know I know it's atrocious, um, but anyway, it is 2300 over there, laughing boy. Awesome, cool. Um, what else we got here? Uh, where did your handle come from? We call Brian Blessed Laughing Boy uh, because he... <laughs> um, yeah, because you know, Brian Blessed's the actor that we see in... Oh, God, I'm not even going to try and guess how many movies. Probably most famously in uh, in, uh, in Flash Gordon. He plays, uh, what is it, the King of the Hawkmen or whatever in Flash Gordon. No Hawkmen here at Waterloo, so let me get back to what I was talking about. 
Um, anyway, we have uh, Hugamon, we have uh, Lahey Saint, and um, yeah. So, super broadly, Waterloo is rolling ground with most of the uh, the ridges or the, the rolling um, bands of high ground running generally from east to west. And so we have like this broad valley kind of between the two armies here. This is basically what we're looking at here. Um, with high ground on one side and we have woods on the other side along with this river. Um, I think Wellington, uh, actually I know, uh, Wellington um, knew about this ground. He saw that it was going to be a perfect battlefield under certain conditions. Uh, as he famously wrote, I saw this ground a year ago and I've kept it in my pocket. The next time he found himself with an army in central Belgium and he knew he had to defeat Napoleon, he said, I'm going to try and meet him on this particular patch of ground where I know I have all the advantages. Um, turns out that wasn't entirely true, but yeah, it always helps um, a general if you can pick your own ground. So that was the zoom out. Uh, I do want to also say that the French are all facing kind of the wrong way here. They all should be facing north, um, north and northwest. But again, like the graphics engine of the game is uh, such as it is. Okay, so starting from left to right, this is the western edge of the battlefield here. We have um, Riel's corps here on the uh, French left. So we have um, obviously lots of line infantry. These guys are in the blue coats. We have 12 pounder artillery batteries. Um, we have General Riel himself, he's right there. Uh, he's kind of commanding uh, the French left. We have Carassier uh, heavy, uh, heavy Cavalry here. This is generally, again, I'm sort of working within the confines of the rule system here. Um, People's General doesn't really try to be like a super bean counting, rivet counting, button counting uh, game system. And it's also more or less meant for operational level warfare, not really tactical warfare like this is so yeah it's kind of a square peg round hole kind of a thing uh, rules engine wise but it's fine and it's a lot of fun and it's super fast um so again a uh, carassier heavy cavalry um general riel lots of line infantry and then uh, some artillery uh, one thing uh, that napoleon had plenty of at waterloo is uh, artillery so i gave him a crab load of 12 pounders um and then off here we have these weird looking guys in these gray green coats. These are conscripts. A huge por oh, I'll say a huge portion, but a, a big, sizable portion of what um, Napoleon had on that day. I mean, everyone's heard about the Imperial Guard, everyone's heard about the Old Guard, and the Carassier, and the Polish Lancers, and the artillery, and all these elite, you know, well equipped, long lived, highly decorated units that had been with him all the way from Austerlitz in 1805, maybe even before that, and blah, 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 blah. A lot, again, he had just come back from Elba, and he had to rebuild this army at the end of his Hundred Days campaign. So, he pretty much built this army while on the march. It was threadbare, it was scrapped together, he had a lot of conscripts. Brand new guys that didn't even have proper uniforms yet. Um, so you'll see plenty of those. They're not terribly good, but they, they are troops, and they do fill a hole in the line. So, um, yeah, that's these guys over here on the extreme wing. Extending our view over here to the east, we see Napoleon Center. There's the man himself, obviously, Napoleon Bonaparte. Um, he's commanding uh, on high ground, obviously overlooking the center of the battlefield. He does have his Grenadier uh, de la Garde, so he has his hardcore old guard. These are the guys you see in the movie with the gray mustaches and the gray beards. These guys have been with him since God knows when since Christ was a corporal, as the expression goes. Um, they go all the way back to at least the 1805 campaign. Some of them go back even before that, as far back as Italy and Egypt, 1799. Um, Lord knows how far back they go. They are his most trusted and uh, his hardest core troops. And there's only one unit of them, and they're right there, and they are insanely powerful. All right, so we have, um, like I said, Napoleon, we have his old guard, and we have uh, Marshal Ney, or here is his first name, Michael Ney. Um, Ney was probably his right hand in a lot of these campaigns and battles. Um, bravest of the brave, Marshal of France. Um, probably not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but man, this guy had, uh, this guy had guts. Let me go ahead and put it that way. Let me keep this somewhat PG rated. Uh, this guy was, <laughs> 
there there's not a fight in the world this guy would back down from. He was uh, he was a little crazy. Sometimes to his detriment. Uh, we do see that historically with Waterloo. He does uh, get a little carried away to the point where he compromises willing, um, Napoleon's position in, in a big, big way. Uh, we have some of um, Napoleon's lighter cavalry here. Uh, these are Lancers. Um, a lot of them are from Poland. Uh, not all of them, but um, his light cavalry, I mean, his cuirassiers are, you know, his, his famous French um, heavy cavalry. Uh, his, his really good cavalry, though, were these light, fast cavalry here. Um, that actually wound up stopping the Scots Greys historically and killing uh, the um, Scots Greys commander, I believe, um, which were supposedly the best cavalry in the world. Uh, yeah, whereas Polish Lancers. Uh, both of these armies are, to a certain extent, allied armies. Um, they're not just, it's not just willing, to, uh, Waterloo is not French versus British, or at least not only French versus British, especially on the allied side. Uh, we'll get to them in just a second. Um, so we have the Old Guard here, and this is one of the misconceptions that pops up about Waterloo a lot, is they think that all the Imperial Guard were the Old Guard. There were many guards, many guard regiments um, in, in the French army. So here we have some of these other guards. These are, you know, more typical guards. They're still elite troops, but they're not as badass as the Imperial Guard, or as the Old Guard. Like this guy here, I gave him the uh, combat engineer special ability, so he gets better attack and defense versus uh, close assault, close attack. Um, he gets better attack versus hard targets. He gets insane ammunition bonuses. Um, yeah, these are his little uh, combat engineer special musician special munitions. He's got one, uh, a stripe of experience. Yeah, there, there's a lot going on here. These other guard guys um, shouldn't have all those. Yeah, they have this stripe of experience, but they don't have the two special abilities there. So there are different levels, and this game really lets you drill down into some pretty, you know, reasonable levels of detail. Um, again, plenty of French artillery. Oh! One unit that I skipped over are these two units of uh, sappers. So these are the French combat engineers. They carry these gigantic, like, 1300-style battle axes. Uh, these are the guys that get involved in some of the most brutal fighting at places like Hougoumont and La Haye Saint, where they're literally hacking their way through stone walls with these axes, hacking their way through thick oaken doors and gates, and it gets really serious. These are big dudes. Um, they're not afraid of wielding a freaking battle axe in 1815, so, you know, draw your own conclusions at that point. Um, obviously I gave him the combat engineer ability, so he's got all kinds of, you know, close assault uh, bonuses, close defense bonuses. And um, uh, last but not least, we're looking at um, General Darlan over here on the uh, French right. So again, more uh, line infantry, artillery, um, and that's, you know, uh, some, you know, there's actually no cavalry over here. Uh, no, more artillery, line infantry, and conscripts. So yeah, the French right was pretty pedestrian. Uh, their heavy cavalry was on the left. Um, this is under guys like Kellerman. Uh, and then we had the Polish Lancers that were uh, in the French center, slightly offset to the right. But um, I think both sides sort of realized almost immediately that most of the action was going to take place on the right flank. Or I should say on the French. Uh, on the British right and on the French left. Um, and that's across these fields. You have places like right there, Hougoumont. That's that French chateau I was talking about before. And uh, the Hay Saint. This is, if you've ever seen an episode of Sharps Rifles, this is where the 95th Rifles gets into, and it's, it gets nasty um, in these two spots. These are probably the two most famous spots on the battlefield Hougoumont and La Hay Saint. And we'll definitely be taking a look at them in a little bit. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and start the game over. I hope. Try that again. There we go. And uh, this time we'll be uh, starting it for real. I just wanted to give you guys a chance to take a look at the French army first. So I'm going to set... Uh, oops. I may actually want to start the game first. Okay, so I'm going to set the French as the AI and ourselves as the British. And hopefully you guys will like what I do with the British army. Alright, so uh, the French are going to go first. June 18th, 1815. Here we go. Uh, and they're going to be uh, moving first with the... Uh, with their AI. So right now nothing's happening on the screen, but the AI is taking its turn. Good time for me to catch up on the chat. Oops. 
here come the first French troops. So yeah, this game uh, will pop up um, enemy units that come within a certain radius of you once you get within um, a certain distance. And that distance can be increased depending on your unit type or whether or not you give them the recon special ability. Makes them a little bit more expensive. Oh, here comes some more. Here comes some more. Yeah, the French are coming at me. Finally. Oh, that turn was way too long. <laughs> it makes me nervous. Okay, so before we get started in earnest here, let's take a look at um, the British Army in force. So obviously this is everything that was hidden by Fog of War um, earlier, in the, uh, earlier in the session. So again, starting from uh, left to right. Uh, okay, so the far right part of the, uh, of the Allied line, I'll just call it the Allied line, um, are actually Belgians and Dutch troops back here at uh, Murby Braun, if I'm even coming close to saying that correctly. Um, so we have some Dutch and uh, some Belgian troops. Um, you don't, for some reason, you don't hear very much about them in you know, reading about Waterloo or watching movies about Waterloo or documentaries or whatever. Um, Wellington didn't think highly of them. Whether or not that was justified or not is sort of a, um, what's the word here? Uh, it's sort of a matter of opinion. Um, but because they didn't get really into the thick of it in a lot of places, now there are exceptions, and so we're going to get to that. But because, by and large, they didn't get really, you know, into the thick of it, they're often kind of, you know, kind of forgotten about. Um, also, whether or not they were as good as the average British line regiment, I think they were. Again, I'm not really an expert. But um, the reason why they're not well remembered is there are so many elite, colorful, highly decorated, very famous, long lineage, you know, British soldiers and units and, and formations on the field. They're the ones that get all the attention. I mean, name one, besides the 95th, name one numbered foot regiment that was at, that was at Waterloo. Everyone knows the Coldstream Guards were there. Everyone knows the Scots Greys were there. The Highlanders, you know. Um, but, you know, the Belgians and the Dutch, yeah, they were definitely there too. There are uh, two groups of troops here from Brunswick, um, a region in Germany. And then we have um, the Prince of Orange Corps. So there's the Prince of Orange. He was actually, I think, uh, uh, no, part of the uh, Dutch nobility that was helping uh, run this battle. Uh, notice he has a number seven there. I downgraded him a little bit because I needed some points. Also, the uh, the Prince of Orange, um, William II, not terribly, uh, what's the word here? Not, 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 not a great battlefield commander. Um, he, you know, everyone, you know, who has seen the Sharps Rifle episode has seen, you know, he's not portrayed very well in that, and that's probably a little mean, but also kind of accurate. Uh, not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but he was, you know, high-born nobility. He basically was, you know, the crown prince of one of the major nations on the, uh, on the field, so basically it was almost a political choice to make him commander of at least one of the wings, so here he is. Um... We have the usual British makeup for, uh, you know, a, a lot of their ground forces. We're talking about line infantry, light infantry, which were usually pretty elite. And then there aren't any right here, but we will see in other parts of the battlefield, um, grenadiers. Uh, British, here's a British grenadier regiment. British grenadiers were actually, you know, pretty badass. Now, as they were deployed in real life, it's not how they were deployed here on this map. Um, the British Line Regiment, which each one of these little gaming pieces here would probably be four or five regiments in real life. But a Line Regiment was about 500 to 600 men back in the day, divided into 10 companies of anywhere between 50 and 60. Eight of those would be Line Infantry. You're straight out, you know, grunts, you know, fighters from the cradle up at 11 a month, you know, that you hear about all the time. You're just straight out normal, you know, ground pounder infantry. Eight companies of them. Then you'd have what they call the two um, uh, flank companies. One company of above average or borderline elite light infantry, and then one just absolute badass uh, company of all your biggest, baddest dudes that got extra rations, extra training, extra equipment. They're called your grenadiers. 
And what that happened was that every regiment would have, again, those eight companies of line, one company of, uh, one flank company of line, of light, and one flank company of grenadiers. What a lot of commanders would do, however, say you're a brigadier general, or say you're a major general, and you have four or five regiments under your command, or you have ten regiments, twelve regiments, you would strip out all the light infantry out of all your regiments, and you would form this core of vanguard light infantry. And you take all of those grenadiers, one company of grenadiers, out of all of your regiments, and you would just use that as like this right fist, kind of a you know heavy shock force. Um, that was a big practice in the American Revolution, 1770, uh, 1775 to 1781. How much of that was done in the Napoleonic Wars? I'm going to have to defer to some other people uh, on the site um, and in the community, but yeah, I'm not really sure. But just because of the way the game you know, allows you to buy units, we're just going to have to go ahead and do it this way. Sharp is one of your favorite series. Yeah, um, I'm glad to hear that because they are here. If you look right here, we are looking at the 95th Rifles. Um, so they are the Elite Rifleman category. I renamed them as the 95th Rifles, but their actual unit type is Elite Rifleman. The game categorizes them as artillery. Please ignore that. Again, this game is based on a World War II system. It has to kind of... There's a lot of round pegs and square holes, mechanically speaking. Um, it calls them artillery because they have a range of two, an attack range of two, which is a, a musket has a range of one in this game. You have to be next to someone to attack them. They're technically a ranged weapon, so they count as artillery. Again, that's just a mechanics snafu. Don't worry about it. Um, I gave them the special uh, munitions uh, special ability and the combat engineer special ability. The combat engineer special ability is so that they get a bonus in close attack and close defense. These, are, uh, these red numbers are higher than normal. Um, you know, because we have, you know, Sergeant, what was his name, Patrick Harris, uh, Laughing Boy, um, you know, he's got like that six-shot, uh, musket that he rocks around with, I mean, you know, you see, uh, 95th Rifles uh, in that show, you see Sharp's Chosen Men in all kinds of bayonet fights, and they always do awesome. Basically, they're just like beyond elite, they have two stripes of elite, 200 experience points, um, they are absurdly powerful i mean especially for their size that said they're only one unit out of you know 50 or 60 here so um okay so i'm taking too long here on the intro uh but we have um uh the prince of orange uh his core out here then in the british center we have the man himself arthur wellesley uh or Al wellesley also known as wellington um he would pick up that title shortly before this battle uh, I think he picked up that title. You know who's going to know this? Um, LSR2590, otherwise known as Dylan, another historian wargamer. He picked it up either during or in reward for winning his campaign in Spain. Um, I, he, it was either during that or in a reward for winning that campaign. He actually was given the title, you know, Duke of Wellington. Um, but his name was actually Arthur Wellesley. Um, and obviously he's the main allied commander here at Waterloo. His right-hand man, which he actually didn't like very much, but uh, was uh, the Earl of Uxbridge. Um, they worked together well. They had a great uh, working relationship personally. From what I understand, these two absolutely hated each other, like uh, sleeping with the wrong man's wife. I mean, they, it got crazy. These two guys absolutely hated each other, um, but they were able to put that aside, and they actually won a really, uh, really kick-ass victory here at Waterloo. Historically, I think Uxbridge is grievously wounded pretty sure he's the guy at the end of the movie who uh, he, he loses a leg and he's like right next to Wellington when it happens and he's like my god sir I've lost my leg <laughs> and no Wellington looks over at him and he's like eh, my god sir so you have um okay so uh, we have uh, the, the uh, allied center again light infantry we do have two uh, units here of Highlanders these are guys from Scotland they were also part of um, Uxbridge's uh, force. Then we have this guy over here in his weird-looking uh, civilian clothes. That's uh, Sir Thomas Picton. He's commanding the uh, British um, left wing over there. Um, that is historically accurate. I didn't do that. That comes with the game. Uh, and that's actually intentional. So apparently when the armies got here uh, from other parts of Europe, and they all kind of got shipped in, and they formed up for the march, and they started stomping all over Belgium. Waterloo takes place in Belgium, in case anyone uh, isn't sure. 
Uh, somehow his luggage got lost, or left behind, or something, got shipped to the wrong port, or something happened. And so he didn't have his uniform. So, uh, he got to fight the whole battle, um, wearing, like, a, this top coat and a big, uh, you know, a stovepipe hat kind of a thing. Or top hat. Hey, you know, it's either that or his pajamas, I guess. Um, and then, you know, your usual, um, again, light infantry, line infantry, and grenadiers. This is usually mixed at the regimental level, but here it's at the core level, which is a huge difference. Literally two orders of magnitude. But again, we're just trying to sort of show um, the kind of makeup that an average British uh, infantry force has. So that's the general British uh, and allied line. Out in front, there are three bulwarks. There are three points of uh, defense, three speed bumps. These are spoiler positions. So when the French attack, they're going to hit these areas first and get kind of broken up their cohesion and their formation is going to get all screwed up okay and these are the famous points that we see a lot in the battle so the first one again i've gone over it a couple times now is uh, hugamont hugamont is commanded by or is uh, garrisoned by it says cold stream plus guards down there if you guys take a look this is great um i meant to say cold stream and they're the famous ones but there were other there were companies and, and battalions from other guards regiments in there as well. So it's Coldstream guards and other, you know, Royal Foot guards that were also there. Um, these guys here in the green jacket are Nassau and uh, Hanover Jaegers. These are actually mostly German troops. A lot of German troops in this uh, in, in this battle, uh, fighting on the side of the British. Um, that's uh, Hugemann. Then over here we have La Haye Saint, which is commanded by King's German Legion. King's German Legion was a mixed force. Uh, there were some dragoons on horseback, and there were also some uh, some line regiments of uh, of riflemen and uh, and muskets. Um, I went ahead and put the cavalrymen. I'm sorry, I put I put the infantry here. That's the guys who were here. Historically, they hold this position as long as they can. They get pretty much wiped out almost to the last man. But they are assisted by some of their friends up here. These other guys in green, Nassau Line Infantry. And um, our, uh, our famous 95th Rifles uh, winds up in that town as well. Or not that town, in that farmhouse. So those are two of those breakwaters. There's a third one that's never mentioned. Um, uh, Smohan, over here to the uh, over here on the British left. Um, it's it's uh, garrisoned by uh, Dutch and uh, Belgian line infantry. Supported by British artillery and uh, the rest of uh, uh, Picton's corps over here on the flank. That part of the battlefield never gets that heavily involved. That's why you never hear of it. But if you kind of zoom out and you look at the whole British position, again, you've got one, two, three breakwater positions to sort of break up a French attack um, coming in against the Allied line. The first two get all the glory or all the memory. Not so much glory because these are horrible battles. Um, I mean, I'm talking about courtyards stacked three and four deep and dead by the time this day was over. Um, but for some reason, the, the storm never just really swirled over this way. Um, so, at least not in any kind of force. So, yeah, we don't hear much about the uh, the Belgians and Dutch that were ready to do their part as well. Again, this was an allied army. So I think I've blathered on long enough. We got a pretty good outlook of what uh, the allied line looks like. We've already gone over the French line. We've let the French take their first turn. They are approaching us. And, um, yeah, we see them here. Okay, so Waterloo. Um, the reason I wanted to play the British is not only because, you know, we have more viewers in Britain than we do in France. Um, but also, when you play this game and you let the AI play the British, uh, I've noticed, I did some play testing, um, they come off that high ground and they charge right at you because AI. Um, that's not really what happened. <laughs> and I know the war game is not supposed to be a, a recreation or whatever, but Waterloo was probably one of history's greatest delaying actions. It was Wellington picking a nice big piece of ground that he knew he had all the advantages to, setting up a defensive position, again, including these spoiler points that we were talking about before, digging in, and hoping to God he could last long enough. Um, because he was being attacked by Napoleon, which had a, a much better force. 
a much bigger force. So, hello, Skoback. Thank you for joining us. Um, yeah, Laughing Boy, I have had that exact same theory about uh, Sean Bean. Sean Bean has literally used up all of his karma in the Sharps Rifle series, where he has survived more situations than, um, you know, any man has the right to uh, expect. <laughs> he said more good luck than the law should allow. And ever since then, he has been repaying the law of averages, because now he dies in absolutely everything, because Sean Bean. Uh, again, that's because he made it through like 17 episodes of Sharp Rifles. Um, yeah, so I totally agree about that. So, um, again, I don't have a big campaign map, but I don't want to bore everybody to tears with a huge uh, historical background. But um, the general background, because it, it, it plays into why I picked the British, why the French are having the AI, why the French are attacking me instead of vice versa, and so on and so forth. It all kind of plays out from the general and broad historical situation behind the Battle of Waterloo. So, earlier in the 1800s, obviously Napoleon is awesome, he's kicking the world's ass, he's, he's stomping all over the place. That's great. And then he eventually loses, like, big time. He loses big time in Russia, and then he gets absolutely crushed by, like, three allied armies at the Battle of Leipzig in 1813. That's the end of the French Empire. A lot of people like to say that Waterloo was the end of the French Empire. The French Empire's been dead and buried for two years by the time this battle even takes place. So, Leipzig is pretty much what crushes um, the French Empire and pushes Napoleon back into France. So, Napoleon surrenders, he abdicates the throne, and that's in April of uh, 1814, and that's it, that's the end of the Napoleonic Wars. They kick him off to this tiny little island, um, Elba, off in the Mediterranean, except he escapes next year, 1815. He comes back to France, and even though he's literally like one guy with maybe a couple dozen guards, he's so popular and he's uh, such a personality that as soon as news gets out that he's back in France, the entire nation rushes back to him. And this is what kicks off what history calls the Hundred Days Campaign. And the Hundred Days Campaign culminates at Waterloo. Waterloo is day 100 of the Hundred Days Campaign, roughly speaking. So, the general situation is Napoleon is back. He suddenly has an army out of nowhere because everyone, his old army has all rejoined him. As soon as Napoleon comes back, all of Europe declares war on Napoleon. Not on France, not on the French army, against Napoleon himself. They declare war on him personally, and they had, you know, armies just start coming at him from every direction. So, Napoleon's got a problem. He's got armies coming at him from multiple directions, and this is where you start to see Waterloo take shape. As these armies are coming at him from multiple directions, they're smaller than he is individually, but if he, if he lets them gang up on him and they start to combine, he's going to get crushed. So he's now in Belgium, central Belgium, at a crossroads called Waterloo. Um, he's got, you know, a pretty decent force. And he's facing off against Wellington. He knows that another whole German army, or technically Prussian army, under command of uh, Blücher, uh, Marshal Blücher, is coming at him uh, from the east. And... Napoleon's plan is to def attack each of these armies with his whole army in turn when they're still small enough where he can beat them individually. If they gang up on him, he's dead. So Wellington is badly outnumbered by, uh, or overpowered, whatever you want to call it. He's, he's, over, he's overmatched by Napoleon here at Waterloo. But he knows that Blücher is like seven or eight miles away. And he is marching hard from the east. The battle starts at 11:35 in the morning, 15. Uh, I'm sorry, 18 June, 1815. And if he can just hold on until one of two things happens: the sun goes down, which is going to be a long time because it's the middle of June. Either the sun goes down, or Blucher shows up. In fact, he's that's a famous line that he supposedly said on the battlefield is. God grant me night or grant me Blucher. I need one of those two things. Um, if I can hold out until then, I'm okay. All that wraps around to saying this is why I'm playing um, the British, 
and letting the French attack me as the AI. Because when I let the British play the AI, even though they were fighting a delaying action, they all just attacked me, you know, Leroy Jenkins style, and it, the battle's over in like three turns. So, didn't want that to happen. And it's also not terribly historically accurate. Okay, guys, we are now playing. Uh, my knowledge on historical wars is crazy impressive. Uh, thanks very much, Laughing Boy, but I am a neophyte at Napoleonics. I, like I said, I'm conversant. Um, you know, I can keep up in a conversation. As far as leading the conversation, you want to talk to guys like Civil Courage on, on Tabletop? You want to talk to guys like, uh... LSR 2590 or Dylan, a uh, big supporter of the site. He has his own YouTube channel called Another Historical, War Another Historian Wargamer. He does a great review series on the movie Waterloo, 1970 Waterloo movie, um, that you can check out. Um, yeah, these guys actually know a lot more than me, uh, at least as far as you know Napoleonics go. But okay, here we go. Um, let me go ahead and save the game. Okay, so the French are coming at us. So far, we have them sighted from um, Hugomont, and we have them, sure enough, right at La Haye Saint. So, what should we do, guys? <laughs> Jim has, oh, thanks, because science teacher. Welcome, Skobak. Jim has said he is done explaining about three times now, so the game should start soon. Yeah, Skobak knows not to show up until at least 20 minutes into the stream. Um, <laughs> All right, let's get this game going here. Let's take the 95th Rifles. Let's put them down here in uh, La Haye Slam. So they can help with the defense. Nassau down there as well. These guys are going to hold for now. Eh, let me get my artillery where they can help out. So I want to make sure that the artillery... The artillery has a range of four. Uh, I have the hex grid turned off. One, two, three. But yeah, I want to make sure that when these guys get attacked, these um, artillery batteries will be able to offer uh, support of fire. These are nine pounders uh, that I gave the British mostly. Um, again, I'm not an expert in Napoleonic artillery. They had like 20 choices in the game. I didn't know which one to pick from. Um, I do know he had some nine pounders there, so I just went with that. And I kind of, uh, I kind of wanted to make sure that French artillery was better than. Let's get the Scots Grays going. Uh, I wanted to make sure that French artillery was a little better than uh, British artillery, because that's kind of, well, that, that was kind of the case. William of Orange, what are you doing? That's Paul Bettany in the uh, Sharps uh, episode. Kind of a putz. Just, just saying. Actually, you know what? I'm on defense. I'm not going to get too crazy. No one's moving against my uh, uh, my left wing over here. Uh, I'm, I'm fortified on nice high ground. Artillery is already overlooking my Dutch and Belgians. But my Highlanders, they, they, they cannot stand still. They're going to move forward a little bit. Because of reasons... Play the bagpipes, or, or not, because they're atrocious. Oh man, my movement is terrible. All right, I'm just kind of pushing forward with my uh, with my left wing here a little. I'm not getting too nutty with it. I should probably occupy that town. Because if the French get Grenadiers in there, I'm going to need a friggin' bomb, an atomic bomb to get them out of there. Alright, you know what? Let's just leave it alone. Um, I'm probably not playing very aggressively, but I'm doing that kind of by design. So I'll go ahead and end the turn, and we'll see what the, the French have to say. Uh-oh. Combat! Battles joined! Coldstream Guards, keep it to them! Yeah, they just totally stomped those French line infantry. What are you doing, Lancers? Alright guys, this is going to be a short stream because the French are just impaling themselves on my defense here. 
Who showed up to the stream to watch the French get killed? As I say, they're gonna totally stop me. Oh crap, that's Imperial Guard! Two battalions of Imperial Guard just attacked La Haye Saint. Uh, the, oh, there are the Axe guys! Yay, Axe guys! I was hoping the Axe... I call them Axe guys, because I'm totally a grown-up. This is right after Laughing Boy complimented me on my historical uh, knowledge. I don't call them combat engineers or sappers. I call them the Axe guys, because they got the Axe. <laughs> Alright, it's time to open fire with some artillery. Holy crap. Yeah, these uh, Imperial Guard guys scare me. So because you attacked me, I'm going to drop some artillery over the heads of Sharps 95th and my King's German Legion, and I'm going to drop some 9-pounder uh, shells here on these um, Guard Grenadiers. Goodbye. Holy crap! <laughs> Did you see that? Uh, that wasn't supposed to happen, but I'm not going to complain. Holy mackerel, that was intense. All right, so um, I'll, I'll so I just clicked on this artillery battery here. As you can see, as I hover over potential targets, it gives me a little British flag and a little French flag, and those are anticipated losses if I attack. So I get to sort of you know make a decision. Now that's not guaranteed. This is what the computer predicts. Then you commit the attack. A little RNG action happens, and um, who knows what happens? But it's going to be about that. That last one predicted five kills, and I got like seven kills, you know, so I'm gonna, this one's predicting five more. Point blank canister fire out of my nine pounders. Go for it. And that's how I got five. Okay, so let's have a cavalry battle. Who wants a cavalry battle? So, these two uh, brigades of uh, Karasi 8, that's French Armored Cavalry, have attacked, uh, there's already a cavalry battle going, and my, um, Scots Greys, they called them that because they always rode around in white or gray horses whenever possible. Um, in combat, of course, you use whatever horse you can get. But they were super elite and could usually pick their own horses. So I've got two battalions of those. And they still can't reach. Or at least not all of them. Because they're heavy cavalry, they don't have the best movement. Alright, so this guy is going to attack... Holy crap, six and five. That will be an absolute bloodbath. I'm going to try and wipe out this uh, this uh, battalion of uh, Karasier here. Let's see what happens. Stopped him! With no loss, I ran to another one. Holy crap. Yeah, there's a lot of... The, one thing about the French, there's a lot of them. They have numbers in this battle. I'm going to get some light infantry... Or some line infantry up here to protect my artillery. Six to two, that would be a bad attack. I will not do that. Nassau Hanover Jaegers. Kill some there we go. So um people on the stream might notice a little bit later that uh what's the word I'm looking for here? Um this is again a mod of an old SSI system called People's General, originally written for modern Cold War World War Three. Um, so obviously it's a little bit out of its depth here with Napoleonics. Then they made up uh, a whole bunch of uh, World War II mods for it, and they went back into World War One. They kept going further back in history. Um, so what the hell was I going to say? Uh, so yeah, that's where you get a lot of these game mechanics that you uh, recognize from earlier. People's General, and before that, Allied General, and before that, Panzer General. Now I'm all the way back to 1993. Uh, some of the old mechanics. Oh, that's what I meant to say. Um, that was lucky. Yeah, so far, the RNG is treating me with a lot of kindness. Coldstream Guards. Uh, before I get tangled up here, let me finish the point I was trying to make. One thing that you can do is um, attacking unit several times. If there's ever a possible way to attack a unit several times in the same turn, um, even if you don't whittle them down, you are reducing what's called their entrenchment level. And this is how I got off on that tangent. This is an old trick from all the way back through Allied General and Panzer General series games going back to 1993. And that's what kind of happened to these Karasiers. I was able to attack them. So if you can attack 
a, a, a strong enemy unit that's really powerful and he's on good ground and he's going to slaughter any attack that you send in there, throw some artillery at him. Even if you do no damage, you've reduced his entrenchment. If you're playing a more modern setting, throw in an airstrike. Even if you won't kill him or even damage him, it'll cause him a little bit more damage. Send in your unit that has a good defense and not a great offense just to force the computer to acknowledge that you attacked that unit a third time. You won't do much damage, and because your unit has good defense, maybe it didn't, you know. Then you send in your then you send in your glass cannons. And that's in this game, in this kind of a setting, your tough, resilient, your tanks, your tough, resilient units that don't do a terrible lot of damage, those are your infantry. Your glass cannons that do ridiculous amounts of damage, but if you breathe on them, they die. That's your cavalry. So you want to hit, if at all possible, with your infantry first. Actually, you want to hit them with artillery first, then infantry, and then cavalry f to finish them off. It is the usual trick. So who should we give the kill to? The Coldstream Guards? They are the most famous. Coldstream Guards? Do it. Ooh! French, uh, French artillery support from way over here. Damn, that French artillery has a long range. So you can set up your batteries in such a way where if an enemy unit attacks one of your units within a given radius of your artillery, your artillery can offer defensive fire support. That's what just happened. Um, and it did cost me one little strength point out of my cold stream guards here. So that wasn't good. These guys have all attacked already. These guys have not. Awesome. A fresh unit of cold stream guards. Uh, not cold stream guards, I'm sorry, uh, dragoons. Dragoons aren't great. They're like medium cavalry, you know. Against these Karasiers, I'm going to lose 6 to 5. Bite the pillow and think of England. I'm doing it. Ah, 5 to 5. I actually got away with that one a little bit. But yeah, I lost half that unit right there. It went from 10 to 5. Because these Karasiers are no joke. That is elite French heavy cavalry. They still have the full armored breastplate. Even in 1815, because they give no shits. I mean, try telling them what century it is. I dare you. Let me know how that goes out for you. Okay, so as I'm starting to get drawn into a major battle here on my right, um, on the British right, uh, I don't want to leave them hanging out there in the breeze. But I don't want to... Oh, see, that's what I was afraid was going to happen. Oh, go for it. Oh, I got away with it. Light infantry, now from the flank. That unit's been damaged, and he's now been attacked. His entrenchment level is one less. Two to five. That should be a pretty good attack. Boom! Hey, um, Brunswick Light Infantry, get up here. I'm committing you to the battle. They didn't really get into it historically, but they're not. that's not going to be the case this time. Because I need them. Belgians and Dutch, get up here. You're not sitting the battle out this time. Okay, oh no, Sharps Rifles! Sharp Rifles versus those elite Fran uh, French um, axe uh, uh, sapper engineer guys. It says 0 to 7, because I made Sharps Rifles. I made 95th Rifles just absurdly overpowered. I mean, intentionally overpowered. Again, this was going to be a stream. Everyone loves Sharps Rifles. Sharps Rifles, or the 95th Rifles, were there at Waterloo. I've made them intentionally and absurdly overpowered, because it's going to be a fun stream. Kill some, uh, some French sappers. That was supposed to be seven kills. It gave me nine. They almost eliminated that entire unit. Let's see if the artillery can finish them off. The artillery has already fired. Damn. Oh! The, um, who is these? The Hanoveran? A King's German Legion can finish them off. But King's German Legion has bigger problems up, up in front here. And Polish Lancers. Oh boy. Well, we've got one thing right historically. The Heisan and Hugamon have turned into major bloodbaths. But so far, the British are doing very well. Hey, uh, Wellington, how about we sit you by the Objective X? 
Uxbridge, how about you do something for a change? Take your Highlanders in here and defeat those Polish Lancers. Alright, ready? Here comes some... Oof, this battle's gonna be rough. There's some over a general attack on this line here. Yeah, you see where these Polish Lancers are actually doing pretty well. shit I was talking before, the, the French are doing pretty well in this section. It cost me. It cost me five points. Alright. Still nothing over here on the right, huh? Or the French right, I should say. The French left. The British left. Obviously, the British are on the north side of the battlefield looking south, so I'm going to be mixing up north and south and uh, east and west and left and right all day. So I apologize in advance. Um, it didn't happen historically, but I'm going to occupy these buildings before the French get troops in there, and then I'm compelled to dig them out. So I would rather them have to dig me out. Grenadiers on the bridge. I dare you to push me off the bridge now. Hey, look! Dutch! Limburger, this is for you. You've already fought these uh, Polish Lancers. Fight them again. Would it amaze you to learn that this is the second Dutch versus Polish battle we've had here on Sit Red Podcast in the past week? Or actually two weeks. We had Dutch versus Poles in uh, Cold War Gone Hot 1985. Um, literally, like, two weeks ago. And here we have... Dutch Line Infantry versus uh, Polish Lancers at Waterloo. Something about Polish versus uh, Dutch is just, you know, it's apparently a thing. I never knew those two countries were mortal enemies. I forgot I had artillery supporting them. Killed them. I, for I guess those countries are mortal enemies. I never knew it. I have a battalion of dragoons here that I will send forward to screen the enemy. Make sure they don't get too close to me again. Whenever you have, like, screening terrain, uh, like, okay, you have a main belt of defense, and then you have, like, some woods in front of you. Ideally, you want to burn those woods down or clear them, but if you can't do that, put some units out there in front. You don't want to give that screening terrain to the enemy for free. If the enemy moves forces into that cover terrain, you want to at least know about it. And that's when you put like some picket scouts up there. And by picket scouts, I mean elite dragoons and Highlander heavy infantry. Oh! <laughs> Except that happened. Oh, that's not good. I'm gonna go this way. It's chaos! Light infantry into the woods. That's gonna be a fun. That was bloodier than the computer predicted. I'm gonna leave him there because I don't want to open up a two gap, a two hex gap, right in front of two of my big generals, right in front of a brigade of enemy Polish lancers. There, that's that's not gonna be good. Gotta protect your leaders. Okay, let me see if I've skipped any units that I didn't want to skip. Those guys, can I do replacements on them? That's uh, Dutch Line Infantry that are beaten up pretty bad, but they've already fought, so I can't send them reinforcements for supplies. You're just going to have to sit tight for now. Same with my Nassau Line Infantry over there in uh, uh, by La Haas Saint. La Haas Saint, if I'm saying that right. Coldstream Guards have attacked anybody, but uh, I can't move them, or I don't want to move them. Sharps Rifles is busy. Oh, um, William Prince of Orange hasn't done anything yet. This guy. How about you do something for a change? Go inspire your men. Alright, what else is going on? Alright, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and end the turn. Falling back! I'm sure they're not falling back with everything. French artillery has me under bombardment. 
French color guard. Attack sharps rifles. Good luck with all that. King's German Legion under attack. Polish Lancers running away. Hugamont is heating up. More Imperial Guard is attacking Hugamont. Hugamont is under attack from three sides. I think I may have just lost Hugamont. Oh no! Oh no. Where are the tanks? Where are the tanks? Okay, ah, uh, this is not good. Sharps Rifles is down to half strength. Five out of ten. Coldstream Guards. The other axe guys at Pokemon. History repeats itself. How is he moving through my units like that? I almost lost one of my color guards. Oh my god, I'm getting slaughtered. Oh no! <laughs> um... Yeah. The, uh... The Nassau and um, Hanoverian troops that were holding Hugamon have been wiped out. The Coldstream Guard is hanging on there by their fingernails. I gotta get them reinforcements. I'm gonna send in this line infantry battalion to try and help them out. Well, yeah, to try and give them some kind of relief, some kind of reinforcements. Before I do that, it's artillery time. I've got to bombard some of these French troops. Stabilize the situation here at Hugamon. Now, historically, Hugamon did hold, but it was a bloodbath, and that is exactly what's happened here. You see, the Coldstream Guards is down to 40%, and the Hanoveran and Nassau regiments have been wiped out. Uh, so, it's actually uh, kind of holding a little like history did. Uh, Alright, speaking of Coldstream Guards, let's destroy some uh, French. Uh, Conscripts. Damn artillery fire. Okay, I'm... Oh, they broke the attack up and he's down to one. I think the Coldstream Guards just got wiped out. Well, they literally have one point left, but... And they can't fall back. Yeah, they're, they're pretty much doomed. I can't send them reinforcements because they are adjacent to enemy units. You can only assign replacements to a uh, to a friendly unit if they are not in enemy zone of control. Zone of control is a uh, is a fancy um, hex schemer a term for base to base contact. Um, so a unit not only commands the hex that it's sitting in, but all the hexes around it, um, or at least influences all the hexes around it in most hex games. And if, obviously, I've got conscripts, I've got more conscripts, I've got remnants of Imperial Guard, I've got French color, well, those guys aren't in zone of control. Yeah, these Coldstream Guards, they're down to 10%, 1 out of 10, are, uh, are in a lot of trouble. I don't think I'm going to be able to save them. Unless I can send in some reinforcements to really pull out a miracle here. Dragoons? Dragoons? Maybe? More Dragoons? Uh, they're blocked. Okay, that guy is not adjacent to any enemy units. I'm going to take this opportunity to give him replacements. Give him replacements. He's not letting me give him replacements. Okay, that sucks. I'll have to 
figure that out later. Brunswick regiments. You lost that battle. What happened? Get in there and kill them. They're only Frenchmen. There we go. British line infantry to hopefully finish the job. Yeah, at least chase them away. More British light infantry. Turn the flank. Let me uh, be a little bit more cautious here with my flank. So here's my general line. And uh, here are my Belgians and Dutch. If I go to the campaign map, or to the strategic map, these are these two units over here to the side. So these are the guys kind of watching and protecting, make sure the French don't send anything clear around the side and get around behind me to my backfield. At least that's the plan. That's why I'm not sending them, you know, full tilt into the battle right now. It's letting me move them, and they haven't attacked anybody yet. Why can't I give them replacements? They're not adjacent to enemy units. Huh. I don't understand that. I don't get it. I would love to give Sharps Rifles the credit for this kill, but I need them to put a bigger hole in another unit. Actually, I will do that. So, Sharps Rifles... Okay, so, when I... When I, I want to attack with this uh, battalion of British Dragoons. I want to attack through this gap and hopefully hit these conscripts in the flank, or maybe even finish off these sappers before they have a chance to uh, get reinforcements. The problem is there's this one little lone company of uh, line infantry in the way. So I'm going to try and uh, have my Sharps rifles, my 95th rifles, finish them off. And hopefully when I click on this unit now, the movement has opened up a little bit. I can attack those sappers with my big unit, but I'm not going to do that until I bombard them with artillery. That should kill five of them. Let's see what happens. It killed seven of them. Now the uh, cavalry right in there with their sabers to finish them off Mongol style. Boom! Alright, the Hay Saint is being steadily... Uh, boom! Steadily stabilized. Historically, of course, the Hay Saint actually did fall. Yeah, that's what happens. The French, if the French win this game, it's going to be through artillery. Their artillery is so awesome. Okay, a little bit of a battle is finally starting to jump off over here on the British left. He's already attacked. I would send these Highlanders over here to help the Hay Saint, but there's also Imperial Guard over here. So I am going to, uh... Also, they've also taken casualties already. They started off at 10, they're already down to 7. Highlanders, finish them off. Boom. Bombard. That was good. Now I'll attack him. Holy, I just lost a whole regiment of light, light infantry. It's French artillery, man. They've got to be stopped.
Alright, who wants to see Grenadiers versus um, Imperial Guard? Just for fun. Oh. Of course, they have artillery support, so I'm gonna lose that fight. Oh no. Send them help! Got a little too aggressive. Yeah, no disrespect, but um, Belgian line infantry versus Imperial Guard, that's that's not gonna work. Just to keep an eye over here and make sure that they, they don't leave this um, British left wing too far open. Hey, uh, William Prince of Orange, I'm going to send him into actual combat. Attack and destroy. <laughs> hey, you did something. He is already be uh, he's already better off than he was historically. All right, uh, I'm going to go ahead and end the turn. Uh, when this game allows generals to attack enemy units, obviously it's not the general by himself. It is him and his personal guard and his little entourage and his staff. It's probably about 50, 60 guys. It's a small military unit, and it's pretty dangerous to commit them to combat anyway. But um, here at Waterloo, sometimes you have no choice. Damn French artillery. Actually, that's my artillery. Defensive fire support. Ooh, it saved those grenadiers. Oh no! Damn, that French cavalry is fast. Where are you going? <laughs> That's not good. I just lost Hugamont. French Axe uh, Sappers in Hougamont. They are surrounded by in, by uh, my troops, but they are technically... Alright, that's okay. Artillery time. And now's when I find out my artillery is out of ammunition. Zero out of four. They're rather out of ammunition. Of all times. Uh, <laughs> I hate my life. Alright, that's their turn to resupply. Boys, I gotta give you a, a, a grave order. You have to retake Hugamont. You have to do it now. Oh my god, these casualties. Oh my god, these casualties. This is gonna be an absolute bloodbath. Maybe I should leave him alone for now. Yeah, believe it or not, I'm going to let the British, I'm sorry, I'm going to let the French go ahead and occupy Hougamont for the time being. I got two artillery batteries that are going to wail on them next turn. I'm going to play the long game a little bit, and I'm just going to wait. Belgians, keep an eye out here on my far right wing. Make sure these um, French don't try anything around my, my right wing. <clears throat> my right wing. <sighs> William Prince of Orange. He feels brave now. These are not, these are conscripts. These aren't that great of troops. Oh no, artillery support. Alright, I gotta stop advancing. Because clearly he's got too much artillery out there. Really? Okay. 
That's why they call you the cold stream guards. Because you're bad asses. Even down to 10% of your strength. I'm sure they're about to get picked off by French artillery, but... I gotta do something about this French artillery. Ugh. Replacements, please? There we go. Maybe I was hitting the wrong key before. Sharps Rifles is down to 50%. I gotta give them some help. Boom, they're back up to full strength. Yeah, I'm gonna take this turn to, like, rebuild a little bit here. Now, rebuilding your units isn't always awesome. Because what it does is it waters down the elite nature of your troops. Because the, re the, the replacements that they're getting are not as good as the original troops. So the overall average of the experience does drop. Um, unlike Panzer General and Allied General earlier in the series, People's General doesn't seem to have any elite replacements uh, mechanic. Um, you can pay extra money for elite replacements and it doesn't degrade the quality of your troops. But uh, I'm pretty sure that People's General doesn't have that. Or at least I haven't been able to find it. Nevertheless, I gotta rebuild. pushing them back a little bit wherever I can. Okay, so my right wing has more or less stabilized. Uh, sorry, the French right, uh, the British left. They seem to have run away through most of these woods. They don't have a heck of a lot of artillery down here. There's at least one artillery battery down here I know somewhere. Uh, La Haye Saint, the, the French have completely run away from La Haye Saint. Hugomont is lost, but I might be able to get it back next turn. For the moment, it's lost. Or at least one hex. I think Hugamon is two hexes. Yeah, hex 1520 and hex 1519. So Hugamon is actually a two hex feature. Hugamon is now split. Some of Hugamon is held by French sappers. Some of Hugamon is held by uh, English or British line infantry. This is exactly what happened. Um, and it's awesome. Especially if I can retake it. Historically, La Haye Saint did fall, but it fell too late in the day to, uh, to help Napoleon. More French cavalry! Ah, oh, there go the Coldstream Guards, finally. Let's see what's going on over here on YouTube. Hey! Walkabout Games! Hello, Chris! How you doing, sir? I apologize if I didn't see, uh, if, I, if, I, if it's been a while since I've seen that. I am trying to fight the French and watch two streams. Sharp's 895th Rifles is back in there. The French are mounting another push at the Hay Saint. Here come more of those, uh, those are those, uh, combat engineers I wasn't able to kill before. He fell back and was able to rebuild them. That's why I wanted to kill them before he retreated. He used a replacements rule on them, and he managed to put them back together. Now I have to beat them all over again. However, Hugamon has been retaken. He has uh, fallen back from Hugamon. Okay, I don't know why he did that, but thank you for doing that. Oh, because I kicked him out of there. The sapper unit that was in Hugamon, this is him down here. He's down to four. He got a new buddy up here. That's the nine. But he's not actually in the buildings yet. Oh my god. Alright, this battle is getting serious, guys. Brunswick Line Infantry. Go down there and fight and find... Or I should say find and fight those, uh... Those artillery pieces. Do it! Alright, so now, as you can see, I have Line Infantry attacking artillery batteries. Hopefully this is going to either use up their ammo or... Artillery gets really, really vulnerable once you get close to it. They can't aim their guns at you terribly well, and their guys are barely armed. They're armed mostly with tools and, uh, you know, uh, pieces of artillery. Um, sponges and plungers and, you know... <laughs> if you can attack them with actual troops, uh, they tend to fold up pretty quickly. The trick 
is reaching them because you have to get through hundreds of yards of dead ground covered by you know solid shot uh, canister fire and god knows what else so i'm going to send down some dutch to help him out oh who's that one of the generals which general is that it's not showing me i can't quite see him yet i see a general there but i'm not close enough to uh to actually identify him yet but that's okay because my um my Belgians, and, I'm sorry, my uh, my uh, Brunswick and my Dutch, that's for you, Lumberger, have routed this battery of French artillery. The Belgians are still kind of watching my, ex my extended right wing here. That's the end of the map. They have a pretty clear view. I just want to make sure no French units get sneaky and try and go around my right. <sighs> All right, we have some conscripts some elite French engineers and some badly damaged French engineers and some sappers. Uh, I'm sorry, not sappers, and some uh, cuirassier uh, heavy cavalry. There's a lot going on over here on the British right. Scots Greys versus cuirassier, because why not? It says I'm going to lose that battle. Do it anyway. I actually kind of won that battle. Alright, cool. It was bloody. Dragoons. Send another line regiment in here to reoccupy the southern hex of Hugamon. <laughs> Artillery that's been restocked, I hope. Is this guy now out of ammo? He used his last artillery, his last ammunition in defense of artillery last turn. So I'm going to go ahead and Alt-S, supply him. This is the guy I resupplied last turn. Why can't you attack? Because you're out of range. Okay, he's going to finish off this unit. Boom! I'm trying to make sure I put my artillery on hills at all times. So they have better lines of fire. Replacements. The only thing I'm not really thrilled about here is that unit of um, sappers that's going to get rebuilt. But you know what? These other sappers, they're not going to get a chance to rebuild again. God damn it. If I can possibly help them. So I'm tired of fighting these guys. back into a pocket. How you like? You got plenty of friends now, Mr. Frank Sappers. <laughs> Look at these poor guys. They're surrounded on five sides by British troops. There's this little speck of blue in the middle here. Oh, poor French Sappers. I'm so sorry. He's already attacked. Brand new uh, line regiment. Hopefully finish him off. Boom. And that's all she wrote on that. Hoist the colors high. Cool. I hate those French sappers. Hey, Mr. Uh, Duke of Orange, or Prince of Orange, get out there and kill some sappers. Dude, William Prince of Orange was kind of a schmuck in real life, and he was a schmuck in the show, but he, in this game, he is, he is bringing it, man. He is, uh, <laughs> he's actually leading the charge here. I've kind of caved in the French left. I'm threatening to. Uh, Hugamont seems really safe now. I lost I lost part of it momentarily. I've retaken it. And now uh, things seem to be uh, doing a lot better. But I don't want to get too... Oh, 
overconfident. Actually, yes, I do, because I want those sappers gone. <laughs> I guess they've already attacked. They won't let me attack. Or they're out of ammo? Nope, they got ammo. Alright, now I'm going to garrison uh, Hougamont with uh, my Brunswick Light Infantry. Alright, so the, the British um, right wing is now... I need to reorganize it. It's in a, it's in a bad state of organization. Uh, as you can see, it's it's more like a column than it is a defensive line. And it's way too far forward, and it's sort of disconnected. In fact, it's really disconnected from my uh, from the rest of my army. I got I got to be careful here. I'm getting a little too carried away on the uh, on the on the British right. How about I send Sharp's rifles to kind of help? redress that situation. That was actually kind of stupid, because there's a whole battalion of uh, Imperial Guards still here at Spartan. That was a little silly on my part. Damn it, Sharp, what are you doing? Bridge. Get down there and engage personally. There you go. Okay, now that I've taken last turn to more or less repair the British left, I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit more aggressive with it. I must try to engage some of these uh, French artillery batteries with my grenadiers. That didn't work. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no no no. <laughs> oh no. Hey Belgian Light Infantry, guess what? I'm throwing you to the dogs, man. <laughs> oh no, there's three batteries down here. Look at these prospective kills. Eight six to zero, my loss. Eight to three, my loss. Oh my god. It's too late now. I can't uh, undo the turn. They need help. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting a little too aggressive here. Hey, Umbrella Guy, come down here and help your, help your troops. You know what might help? Some Highlanders. Send some Highlanders out there. Play the pipes. And uh, re replacements on my uh, on my dragoons. Replacements on my Highlanders. I can't because I've already done something. Here, I took an objective hex. I don't know sure, I'm not sure what that does, but it will uh, cause the AI to take notice and maybe divert some firepower from the actual battlefield. Alright guys, so I know I went into a bit of a discussion at the beginning of the stream about why the British shouldn't attack off that ridge, and then I kind of did exactly that. But, um... I've sort of caved in both flanks here, and now I've got uh, the bulk of the French army in caps... Uh, not in capture, but, um... somewhat enveloped in this central bowl, for lack of a better term. Um, this wide open part of the field uh, bisected by this north-south road. As you can see, I've got lots of troops here, and I've got lots of troops on the other on the, on the other wing. And my center is a little nebulous, but the French have too many problems on their flanks to do much about it. That said, I'm about to take one hell of a kick in the teeth uh, in the east. Uh, the British left is about to get <laughs> hammered 
by at least three batteries of uh, French 12 pounders and God knows what else. So, wish us luck. Here we go. Yeah, they're going back on, on the, the French right. Sharps Rifles is down to 60%. They're still trying to attack me in this area. Oh, I lost another color guard. We've lost the king's colors! Damn, they're... Oh, Grenadiers are pushing at Lahaysay again. Alright, I didn't get beat up as bad as I thought I would. They largely disengaged um, in the east. A little surprised by that. But I won't complain. Alright, it's time to organize, because right now my force is very disorganized. So, leave you there. French artillery is not playing around. Alright, line infantry into the town. What town is that? A possible? If I'm saying that right? Light infantry in towns to hopefully finish off that artillery battery. It's best to finish off units like Panzer General slash People's General mod, whatever, you know. In, these, in this family of games, because if you don't, the AI will use replacements and you'll be fighting that unit all over again. If you can possibly help it, it's usually a good idea to finish them off. Okay, the, end, the, the computer has warned me that there's something scary here. That little question mark core symbol. So I'm going to use um, the bravest man in the Netherlands, uh, the Prince William of Orange, to charge in there and just tell me what's there. Just go, go get killed. Oh, Carassier. I make fun of him, but again, in this game, he's been doing really well. Alright, rather than like, attack at every possible opportunity, I, like, that literally kills me, so I will not do that. If he wants to fight me, he has to come into my buildings and do it. Sharps Rifles, 95th Rifles is down to 30%. They are falling back to Hugamon. I don't want them to get killed. If I have a stream where the 95th Rifles is wiped out, the community will never forgive me. I already know that. So what I'm trying to do is trying to turn that column that we saw earlier into more of a line. Uh, while not losing an entire turn. Dragoons versus Carassier. That's going to be bloody. That's going to be bloody. Yeah. I kind of lost that battle. <laughs> okay, that made it worth it. Alright, so now there's a little bit more of a line here. And I pretty much smashed the, the, uh, the French um, left wing. This artillery can reach that... Battalion, blow them up, please. Do me a solid. Thank you very much. Now I'm going to move this artillery forward because I want to start supporting the ongoing battle in the south. So yeah, we, we've totally abandoned that ridge. You know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say this is the afternoon of Waterloo. When <laughs> the British launched a general offensive at the end of the day. Kind of shoved, Walling, uh, shoved Napoleon back into uh, back to his start positions. And this British artillery is awesome. Epic. I'm gonna move them off those woods, or off that uh, off that high ground, which I know I shouldn't do, but I'll put them in these woods instead. Oh, that's a hill hex. I'll put it. I can't go there. Damn it. Forest. I want to keep my artillery in some kind of cover whenever I can.
I'm going to use these Dragoons as sort of a linchpin. Because again, you always get to see what's next to you. So obviously you see what's in your hex, and every unit can see what's in the hexes around it. And so if you can kind of st string together uh, something of a... Uh, my, my, this, my center here is, is a little squishy. You've got a lot of units over here um, on the British right, and you've got a lot of units over here on the British left, but in the center, it's kind of a void. I've got it covered by some artillery at the moment, but... I don't want to send Willingdon himself on the battlefield, like per se. But... Because his own men would probably shoot him. <laughs> I mean, Wellington's a big hero nowadays, but at the time, his men didn't like him very much. He wasn't very, uh, he didn't think very highly of his men, and vice versa. Okay, I will not give up the Hay Saint. That's the King's German Legion uh, that's still holding that ground. Good job, sir. Uxbridge, attack those uh, color guard. No effect there, but not really surprising. All right, Uxbridge, you take command of the uh, of uh, the British side. Uh, I just have a few more eyes. That's kind of stringing together the central gap. Positioned, British artillery has nothing to shoot at. Getting a little aggressive with my artillery. I'm continuing to develop this attack on my. Uh... Am I cutting into on this too deep? Do I have any more light infantry over here? This gap here makes me nervous. Alright, so here is uh, Picton, sort of caving in the French, uh, the French right. So yeah, you see this general pocket I'm starting to form here. Uh, the problem is I've lost track of some British unit, of some French units. I can't see everything. My flank and rear security may not be so great, but for now, I'm gonna leave it alone. Don't attack my artillery, were you a fool? Oh shit, he did pretty well. All right, guys, we'll probably run through one or two more turns here. I don't want to, you know, be on the stream all night or waste too much of y'all's time. Thanks very much, everybody, who came, who, uh, who came out today. Um, this is one of those anniversaries that you don't want to kind of, you know, let get by you, so to speak. So I wanted to do something. I'm going to spend a bunch of money on re reinforcing my... Uh, So I'm starting to extend this line deeper into that, uh, that French center area. Bombard them. Probably didn't do too much damage. Sharps, 95th rifles, no! Down to 30% again. This time, replacements only got them to 9. Again, that's the second time I've built them up from basically nothing. They've taken a lot of casualties today. So I'll probably give them the rest of the battle off. Are you out of ammunition again? Good grief, man. These British artillery runs out of ammunition quick. Uh, 
supply. Oof. I'm probably gonna come out on the losing end of this one. Yeah, um, pro tip, never attack good enemy infantry with cavalry fresh. If you have to attack infantry with cavalry, attack them with something else first. Otherwise they will form squares and that'll be the end of your cavalry. Oof, they got the crap kicked out of them. Holy crap. Uh, that might be, uh, that cavalry, uh, this artillery down here that's bombarding them. I'm being a little cautious as I'm extending this line further south, because I'm moving into Fog of War Hexes, and if you blunder into an enemy force, they get to attack you first in, like, an ambush attack, and it's not good. Like, right now I have this artillery spotted, but I didn't know if there were any other French units lurking in between. So I'm being a little conservative here. But again, I have to, uh... I gotta be careful. Just clean up this mess. Die, you fool! There you go. And I'm gonna keep pressing them, now that I have something of an advantage here in the center. Okay, so that gap that I was mentioning before, it seems I've, I've now pretty much sealed it. I have a nice, even kind of a curve here. Um, between my left and my right wings, I have a nice newly fortified center. Both Hougamont and um, La Haison are in uh, good hands. My artillery has been resupplied. My generals are in pretty good shape. I got good eyes on my right flank. My left flank, not so much, but fix that a little bit. Yeah, I think my left flank is pretty secure. I think the British might be, uh, have this one pretty well settled. Well, not settled, but I I've definitely got the upper hand in this battle. Then again, I'm playing against the AI. No gigantic challenge. Let's see what the French do. Uh, they're still coming at me. They, they still want this still doing good damage, too. Shit. More of these axe guys! God bless, how many times do I have to kill these fools? I hate these guys. I know, I keep calling them those axe guys, but you know what I mean. Sapper engineers. Bombard these fools and slay them. I brought up all that new artillery for a reason. Now... You know what, William of Orange? I'm not even going to give you the kill. I'm going to give it to the 95th! Even though I said I was going to give him the rest of the battle off, guess what? You're going to get to kill these French sappers. Good job, Sean Bean. Except now you're under French artillery fire and you're back down to 60%. Oh, uh, you said you're going to give me the rest of the battle off! <laughs> if I lose the 95th now, because I was being stupid. I'm gonna take this town, if I can get away with it. Up! Oh. Attack a French general! French general, uh, that's General Riel, that's commanding of the, uh, of the French left wing. He is now under attack by Belgian... No, Brunswick, sorry. Brunswick and, uh, British Light Infantry. Run down the road before you get captured. Too late. Dragoons are going to run you down and stab you in the back. Goodbye, French General. Tell the devil to clean the Do we have any Red Wall fans in the audience? Did you get that reference? Yeah, this is turning into a rout here. I want to capture uh, Napoleon himself. Oh, French artillery. Right? 
is what Calvary is great for. <laughs> you hit them hard with uh, with one of your units, they get yeah, the enemy get, uh, gets bad takes bad casualties, get, takes terrible damage, and falls back and starts to retreat across an open field. That's when your cavalry just draws sabers and you know count the dead. All right, Uxbridge. Put the center back in order, please. There's one battery, at least one battery of French artillery here. I'm going to put two batteries of British guns up here to engage them in a long-range artillery duel that should hopefully start to uh, redress the situation there in the center. Even Wellington's going to ride forward a little bit. There's nothing out here. Am I, are you guys really going to let me take all these hexes? Alright, light infantry are traditionally recon. I'm going to send them recon to see if I can capture this French uh, supply hex. If I run into something and get killed, well, it was worth it. Let's see what happens. Yep, I ran into something. Oh, let's go. Oh no. <laughs> At least I know he's there now. More artillery. Uh, yep, this this turned into a battle again. Oof. We need support down here to be. Of course I kind of overextended myself here, but that's fine. Go broker, go home. Six casualties. Yeah, but they're Dutch, so it doesn't matter. Go ahead. <laughs> Limburger, I apologize. Hey, you took care of half of it. Yeah, this French artillery is serious business, man. Holy mackerel. Uh, speaking of badly damaged artillery, I'm going to go ahead and rebuild this battery of uh, British 9-pounders. Uxbridge! That's not Uxbridge. Picton! You're still in command on the left, sir. Alright guys, we're getting close to wrapping this up because there's not too much left, I don't think. Oh, there go my Dutch. Sorry, Limburger. Yeah, they're in a general... Uh, the French are in a general retreat at this point. I'm still losing forces here and there. Belgians, take the uh, supply X. Leader assigned? What does that mean? I don't even know what the hell that was. It's pretty awesome, there it was. My light infantry, I can either take that hex or I can uh, clean up this artillery. When in doubt, kill an enemy unit before it rebuilds. Do it. Thank you. I can grab the objective hex later. That objective hex will still be there next turn. You know what's not going to be there next turn? A French artillery battery at strength of two. So I've got that second battery of French guns under long-range artillery, at least partially. And now I'm going to hit him with some cavalry. There's Napoleon. We're going to capture him. Yeah! All right, you guys watching, right? We have Uxbridge himself. Wellington's second in command is now going to have a saber duel with Marshal Ney. Actually, my money's on Marshal Ney, because Marshal Ney, but let's just see what happens. This is where the game officially goes off the rails, historically. <laughs> it's a madhouse. Yeah, we're just... The French have collapsed. We didn't even have to wait for Blucher. Now Sir Thomas Picton's gonna go attack Wellington with his umbrella. Go get him, dude. Wellington, come on down here. I want you to personally fight uh, 
Napoleon in a uh, in a pistol duel. Twenty paces. Oh man, I'm sitting here clowning around. Some of these units have taken pretty bad losses. Again, Sharp's rifles. Still, his third round of replacement only at eighty percent. All right, I'm gonna get ballsy with my uh, dragoons. There's nothing here. They're, they've they've disassembled their uh, their right wing. It's a general advance. I'm gonna start to uh, collapse my wing inward because apparently there's no big French forces out here, and I need these forces closer in where there actually are French forces. Again, my Dragoons are going to rush this objective hex. It, that could run into something. Nope. Cool. It's a general advance! All those guys got rebuilt. Rebuilt. I'm leaving King's German Legion, Legion in La Haison just because King's German Le Legion in La Haison. They totally deserve to be there. It's fine. Coldstream Guards I would leave in Hugamon, except they got uh, wiped out. They literally did not survive the battle this time. So, yeah, we're stomping the French really hard in this game, but uh, it wasn't cheap. Alright, end the turn. There's uh, what, Ney and uh, uh, Napoleon himself. So there's Napoleon. There's Ney. I'm gonna snatch up this objective X with my light infantry. I don't know what that means. I guess I get a leader now? Leader assigned to view battle record. Rename units. Hmm. So you see here where you can look up your unit's history, uh, view battle record of a given unit. In a scenario game, that's not that big a deal. Oh, there it is. You get like a little, uh, terrain expert infiltrator. That's what it is. Okay. Um, it's a game mechanic. I don't really use that heavily myself. Cause again, I only started playing around with these people general mods, like literally two weeks ago. Um, but people's general lets you go into, you actually start assigning your units, almost like specializations in a role playing game. Like, leaders get skills and those leaders now not leaders like generals that have their own units on the battlefield but every single one of these little figures on this table here again is probably in real life at least a brigade of a couple thousand men waterloo would eventually engage something like a quarter of a million people obviously we don't have a quarter of a million figures on this table um also the, the prussians are not going to show up but anyway um so each one of these units has probably a brigadier general, if not at least a full a full colonel, followed by a lieutenant colonel, um, captains uh, commanding the companies, lieutenant colonels commanding the battalions, lieutenants commanding the platoons, sergeants commanding the squads or files, and you know further on down the line. Um, and apparently this small brigade or battalion or regiment, whatever kind of unit this is actually supposed to be. This little unit just picked up uh, a special ability. It is Terrain Expert and Infiltrator, which makes sense given the fact that he is now halfway to Paris. I guess the Prince is getting tired because all of a sudden this one is becoming a little sluggish. Oh, those are hills. There's, there, there's rough terrain out there for cavalry. Yeah, this battle's over. All right, what do we want to do here? Just for just just to be foolish, want to bombard um, Napoleon with artillery? It won't let me do it. <laughs> I want to bombard Napoleon with nine pounders. Yeah, it's letting me do it. Napoleon, eat a nine pounder. All right, we don't. He's too far away. Notice we don't see a number underneath him. We can't quite see what his strength is. But he's about to get jungled by about uh, 900 uh, Highlanders.
Icarus versus Napoleon. Except it's not a Turkish supporter. Napoleon's about to get captured by Highlanders. Napoleon, I hope you enjoy a British prison. There goes Napoleon! Napoleon's down! Yay, another leader. Okay, at least I know I know what that is. Attack Marshal Ney! This is just an embarrassing battle now. It's just Huxbridge versus Ney. That's it, Marshal Ney's also captured. Alright, like I said, this battle is pretty much, uh, pretty much over by now, folks. We have one of the last um, French artillery batteries under fire. I'm gonna take that objective hex, please. I can't quite reach it now, but I'll take it later. Alright, you guys were pretty strong. You Belgians were pretty good taking out that last battery. Time to take out a new battery. Oof, that's gonna be a nasty one. Ooh, we got lucky on the random number, number generator there. Oh no! The last... French general is retreating with his last battery of artillery. Come on, Wellington. It's all safe for you now. <laughs> We've won the battle for you, mostly. We've cut the bridge. They're no longer going over the last night river. There's no escape for you. We're going to bring you up in front of a war crimes trial. King of, or uh, Prince William of Orange. There's nothing for me to shoot at. What the hell are those brown guys? Infantry Legion Portuguese. Uh, I've never bought any Portuguese. In, uh, he must have levied those during the battle. It's a man. We, we got him pinned in this river now. We, we've taken this bridge, he can't retreat across this river, and he's basically got some Portuguese uh, conscripts in there, and uh, Michael Ney. Oh, I thought we killed Michael Ney. That must have been, um, uh, that must have been Durlan that we fought earlier. So now it's just Michael Ney, bravest of the brave. It's only fitting that you're the last guy left. That actually makes a weird kind of sense. You're fighting British light infantry now. Shoot him out of the saddle. Alright, let's uh let's wrap this up. This is getting absurd. Any more uh victory hexes down here? Hey Mr. Rasmus, hello! You just missed it, man. We just captured Napoleon. <laughs> yeah, this battle's hella over. Um we kick the crap out of him. Uh, but that's okay. He's got one unit of Portuguese conscripts left. I'm going to attack him with my Belgians. I don't even know if you're even worth British soldiers. I'm going to attack you with Belgians. Actually, that's not true. I'm going to attack you with British. Uh, Ooh. Damn. Okay, I will not make fun of the Belgians anymore. Shit. They just stood tall. Oh, they're also in buildings. Get some Highlanders in there. Do it! That's the end of that. Um, Dragoons, take that last objective hex. This might end the game. Press 
prestige bonus. That means I can buy up. Oh! Allied victory. I've captured all the hexes. The battle of Waterloo is over. I am happy to say. Oh my god. All right, guys. That, my friends, is the Battle of Waterloo. Review the battlefield. So now it shows you where everything was. Now that the French have, like, anything left. But I've taken all the objective hexes. I've lost no objective hexes in turn. And, uh... Oh, I didn't take this one. So I was right about to, to take it. But that's, uh, yeah, that's the end of the game. So it went kind of like it did historically. Um, the uh, French started off on the attack. I did deliberately held my ground. I built my army to do so as the British player. And I, uh, I set up my forces as historically accurate as this rules engine will allow. Uh, and also by my somewhat, uh, what's the word, you know, uh, solid yet by no means expert knowledge of this period. Or let me rephrase that. Ad adequate, but by no means expert knowledge of the period. So the French started off um, on their ridge, on their high ground, just like they did historically. They launched big attacks at the two strong points. Hougamont, right here, formerly held by Coldstream Guards and Nassau and uh, Hanoverian uh, Light Infantry. And then over here, we had King's German Legion, who are still there. King's German Legion at La Haye Sainte. Um, La Haye Sainte did not fall this time. I reinforced them immediately with 95th Rifles. Whereas historically, uh, Wellington hesitated and didn't send in 95th Rifles until the battle was pretty much already over in that sector. Um, so that was it for them. Uh, I managed to hold uh, La Haye I did l partially lose Hougamont. So Hougamont, if we notice over here, is a two... Excuse me, a two hex feature. I did lose the southern hex to specifically those French combat engineers uh, with the axes, uh, French sappers, um, heavy shock assault um, combat engineer troops. So that was like again a perfectly historical uh, thing, um, as far as you know the, the result goes. What wasn't so perfect was Coldstream guards and the other guards regiments that were in there were wiped out. Um, I think the Hanoverians did survive. That's not them, that's Brunswick. Uh, yeah, I think I also lost uh, the Hanover uh, reg regiments in there. So I was able to hold and retake the rest of Hougamont, uh with uh, follow-on regiments of British line infantry. Uh, we also had Highlanders, uh, Rasmus. We had, you know, pretty much the whole, the whole uh, British force. Again, this rules engine only lets you get so granular with your units or whatever. Um, but we did a pretty good job. Uh, I won't go back and do it all again because the other people in the chat have already heard me blather about it for like half an hour. Um, but we held them. We held those two points, Hugamon and um, uh, La Haysan. Historically, La Haysan fell. Uh, just it fell too late to help uh, Napoleon and the French. But we actually managed to hold it. And then once we sort of absorbed the shock of the French uh, attack, we then went over to the general offensive which happened almost without my knowing. I mean, I just started to kind of push, and there was nothing really there, and I pushed, and there was a little something there, and I destroyed it, and I pushed. And I kept saying I'm being too aggressive, and I'm being too aggressive, and I kept pushing. And before you knew it, we had the French army pretty much collapsed on both wings, and we pinned them into this pocket here along the river, almost like uh, the British powers in Arnhem, and then that was it. We just squeezed them. We personally captured Napoleon, we personally uh, either captured or killed uh, General Riel and General Derlon. We just took out Marshal... Uh, Marshal Ney is still on the table. That's Marshal Ney right there. He's the last British... I'm sorry, he's the last French figure on the table. Uh, so Rasmus asked, did the Prussians come in? No, they did not, and no, they did not have to, because I defeated the French utterly before the Prussians even showed up. Again, the table was set up more or less historically at least as far as this game can let you, because it's not really, you know, a super complicated game. Um, but I'm, I'm fighting the AI. And, you know, an, an AI is never going to be as good an opponent as a real player. I doubt I would have done this well against an actual experienced player who knew the battle, who knew the system, and, uh, you know, a real thinking opponent. Here I'm just beating up on a computer. 
time, so. Surprise, surprise, I won. Yay. Um, also, I had to design this scenario myself, because the game comes with the maps and the units and all that, but it does not come, and it comes with some campaigns, it does not come with the scenarios. So, I had to build this game myself, which means I had to spend about two hours last night on a crash course on, on, uh, on Waterloo. <laughs> to at least be able to come close on some of the uh, approximations of this game. Um, but we were able to do it, and we had a pretty good... Uh... Okay, I'm done with this now. Alright, um, yeah, we were able to do it, it was pretty fun. I'm not going to start the game again, guys. I just want to start the map over. Because we have some new people in the chat, and I want to... Uh... So the French are the AI. The French are going first. Just give it a second to play the French turn. Um, yeah, Rasmus, uh, yeah, the AI is not, uh, it's not spectacular. Now, in Panzer General Forever, the update and the fan remake... The AI has been improved, and you can actually, I believe, set like an AI level. Like, do you want to play against a novice player? Do you want to play against a, you know, a good player? Do you want to play, you know, I don't know how effective it is, because I don't know that much about artificial intelligence, but, um, according to Panzer General Forever, which I think you have now, um, you told me you downloaded it, I think you can set the AI level. But in these old original games, yeah, the AI level is not, uh, ain't that big of a deal. What the hell? Oh, crap! Um, okay, sorry, um, I'm apparently playing, uh, as the French here. It's waiting for me. Alright, so this was the French armor to start with. Again, I won't go through it unit by unit like I did, um, uh, at the earlier part of the stream. But this was the beginning of the game. We have approximate locations of the kinds of units that Napoleon had on the day under uh, his three his two core commanders are uh, Riel and Derlon. Marshal Ney is on the table of course we have Napoleon the old guard the Imperial Guard yes those are two different things tons of 12 pounders lots of French conscripts because a lot of the French army was very hastily rebuilt remember this is the end of the hundred days campaign we have Polish Lancers for light cavalry we have Carrossier for heavy cavalry uh, and so on and again our two sapper brigades that are meant to chop down the wooden doors at Lahasan and uh, Lahasan, sorry, and uh, and, and uh, Hugamon. So new game. Do that over. Except this time, set the British player as the uh, human. Oh, hold on, guys. Um, the the British player as the human player. All right, now it's going to play the French turn, but just give it a second. AI settings. Yeah, cool. Uh, play, oh, yes, on Crete with it on default. Okay, cool. So you've been replaying that more recently, Rasmus? Uh, I keep meaning to get back to Crete um, in uh, Panzer General. We're going to get to it uh, eventually. Um, we try not to do... We have nothing against World War II. Obviously, we do a lot of World War II, but that's kind of the the point, and that's kind of the problem. Is that we don't want to become just another one of those websites that does nothing but World War II, like all the time. Uh, early war World War II almost doesn't count. If you ask me, that's practically its own conflict. Uh, when I say too much World War II, I mean too much. 1944, Panda Brothers, U.S. paratroopers versus Fallschirmjäger. Here we go again. You know, stuff like that. Oh, you're doing the whole campaign. Okay, cool. All right, so if you're already at Crete, you've already gone through, uh, yeah, you've gone through Case White, both stages. You've gone through um, the Vaser Ubung up in Norway. You've gone through uh, uh, did the, uh, the two parts of France. Big cats. Did it let you get through, uh, Rasmus, if you're already at Crete, did it let you get through uh, Sea Line, or do you have to do that in 1943? And I don't know what you mean by big cats. There shouldn't be any big cats in Crete, unless I don't understand you correctly. Um, or you have the game set on a certain cheat code that allows you to buy anything 
uh, in that nation's tech tree. There is a cheat code in Panzer General uh, Forever that allows you to do that. Alright, and again, um, again, I'll go through this really quick because, you know, we did the earlier in the stream in detail. We have the three basic core of Wellington's army. There's Wellington himself, uh, his second in command, Uxbridge. There's poor man Picton, who, uh, his uniform got lost on the way to the battlefield, so he's wearing a top coat and a, uh, a top hat. And then we have William of Orange, everyone's favorite guy to laugh at at Waterloo. Um, Belgian Dutch infantry, we have a King's German Legion, uh, Sharps Rifles, the 95th is there, more or less historically where they were. Lots of light infantry, line infantry, and grenadiers, 9-pounder artillery, uh, because British. We have the Scots Greys here in uh, gray, horses, ironically, you know, go figure. Lots of dragoons for light, for light cavalry. And... Uh, yeah, more Belgians and uh, Dutch out here um, on the British left wing. And some Highlanders. So again, it was pretty much what was there. Now, La Haisan had the King's German Legion quickly to be reinforced by Nassau Line Infantry and the 95th Rifles. So I think one of the things that we did differently in the game versus historically was that we reinforced La Haisan like right away. Like, the second the battle started, we sent those two regiments forward. Whereas that didn't happen historically, and the Haisan wound up being lost at about 6 p.m. Uh, that evening. Here at Hougamont, we have Coldstream Guards and other Guards regiments, backed up by Nassau and ha uh, Hanero Hanerovian Jaegers. Uh, again, those are the units that were there historically. We did lose those two units, and we did lose one hex of Hougamont. We did retake it, so Hougamont partially fell to a French sapper unit with the axes. That's probably my favorite part of the game. Because whenever the, the computer or, and your gameplay or your opponent in a live game um, gives you a damn near historical result, uh, that's always a lot of fun. Uh, and then, of course, everything else went sideways. We caved in both flanks. We started a general offensive right down the center, and we wound up killing, capturing Napoleon. Uh, both of his corps commanders, uh, Dernalon and Riel, and Marshal Ney, with a group of Portuguese that I guess he pulled out of his ass, uh, Portuguese uh, gendarmes or something, um, <laughs> uh, as, as his like, emergency levy reserves or whatever. I didn't build that into the army. The AI must have bought them partially through the game. And uh, yeah, that was the result. Decisive British victory. Again, I'm playing the AI, so surprise, surprise.